so not used to seeing a girl in a game. So the first thing they homed in on was the boobs. And it was like, woof. But everybody that kept like, coming up and seeing, they go, wow, she's so big. So we'd have to make a small, and then somebody would go, well, no, you know. And, and it was just ridiculous that we, you, you can't believe how many different sizes she actually went through. <laughs> That's not what the company says. As we've got better uh, and the technology's got better, we've had the ability to put more um, more pieces into Laura, if you like, which in turn makes her look a little bit more real, but also gives her a little bit more shape. I can actually move these around to get the shape just the way I want Laura to look. This perfect virtual woman takes shape under the watchful eye of her designers. It's they who teach her all her moves. The model you see on the left here is the, the version of Lara that we've used in-game up until now. Um, each square that you see there is called a polygon, and in this model there's around 400 of these polygons which make up the Lara Croft. On the right, what you see is the new next generation Lara Croft. Um, as you can see there, there's far more polygons being used in this model. There's now around 4,000 polygons. So that's a tenfold increase in the amount of detail we have on Lara. The way we actually create that animation is we actually create a skeleton inside the character, which pretty much represents a, a human skeleton. Everyone wants to really see Lara as most realistically and believably as, as they can. The tablet was returned to the sand that had spawned it beneath the citadel of Saladin in ancient Cairo. Some of the original designs now and look at where we are today and we, we see a, a huge difference and I think also the consumers see a huge difference. Um, for us, it's, it's all been about, you know, the, the new technology and making the character. It's very, very effective and we are getting a lot more out of it than we have previously with other packages. We've got great modeling, they've got great elements of Maya and use Maya as our, as our base tool and within that, the elements that we want specifically for game design, which are very specific requirements, we'll actually use Maya allows you to fetch your map just one place and then get that information and, uh, and uh, we have a program which is quite customizable with MedScript. We can uh, have different tools and programmers can write different tools and integrate them into Maya. We write the progression and the Spitze der aktuellen Spieleentwicklung. Vor der eigentlichen Entwick 2 und die neue Generation von leistungsstarken PCs ermöglichen ein bisher ungeahntes Maß an Bewegungs- und Aktionsmöglichkeiten. Statt wie bisher 500 Polygonen setzt sich Lara in Angel of Darkness aus 5000 Polygonen zusammen. Alle Bewegungsabläufe sind wesentlich komplexer, denn mittlerweile können die Figuren bis in die Fingerspitzen animieren. Blurring the boundaries between reality and imagination. Always willing. Always what you want her to be. Always in your hands. Numerze znajdziecie kolejne elektryzujące relacje z planu. Zbliżająca się wielkijają, inni wręcz nienawidzą. Lara Croft wywołuje podobne uczucia. Po dwóch pierwszych częściach przygód panny archeolog, odpowiednika Indiany Jonesa, zapanowała euforia. To najlepsze gry w historii, wspaniałe, przełomowe, mówiono. Potem nastąpił przesyt i gwałtowny spadek zainteresowania produktami z tej serii. Dopiero udana ekranizacja przygód Lary i nieoczekiwany sukces filmu otworzyły oczy firmie Eidos, która ponownie uwierzyła, że jeszcze nie wszystko stracone. 2 miliony dolarów uzyskane za prawo do wykorzystania wizerunku Panny Croft na potrzeby filmu, interesowanie się grami z tej serii i na to liczy właśnie firma Eidos. Czy jednak gra Angel of Darkness odniesie sukces? Po tym co zobaczyliśmy, z jaką determinacją i zaangażowaniem and that she needs to build up her strength and skills again. She was really weakened um, at the tomb in Egypt. So it's, it's the story of her sort of returning as a, as a character, giving her the, the abilities that she once had uh, and then lost. We shall have and can't get to that door, but you might be able to climb better than me, so you can go around that corner and drop down the courtyard that I can't get to. We've also added more moves.
Hard push Lara's adventures to the next level. Everything's just goes up to certain areas. I've got really very realistic um, shadows casting across the floor from objects, from Lara, other enemy characters. Everything casts shadows onto everything. It makes a hell of a difference. As Lara struggles to determine what's happened to Von Croy, she runs into a new character in the Tomb Raider series, a character who's an integral part of the game. His name is Curtis, and uh, he is the coolest character ever. He's uh, a member of an ancient sect of knights called the Lux Veritatis. They've sort of got uh, paranormal powers, and basically he's a demon hunter. We wanted Curtis to be quite a different character to Lara. Um, it's going to be quite an interesting sort of love-hate relationship that they have initially because Curtis is there in this game and, and he's always one step ahead of Lara. He's, he's almost like the thorn on her side. He seems to be on his own mission, has his own agenda, but he's always just there one, one stage ahead of her. So they don't like each other at all and it's not till later on in the game that they sort of get uh, to work as a team. In this world, the player should look as well as listen. Of life. A world that you wouldn't normally see Lara in, but a world that she... A film with multiple parts and possibilities. But there is a shadow on Lara. He watches, waits, he bides his time. His name is Curtis. He wants revenge. And Lara will help him extract that revenge. He has a different approach to Lara, less subtle perhaps, but still effective against certain opponents. They will not stop. They have not stopped in 600 years. He's got much more power to process enemies doing much more complicated things. They will work together. Notice when another enemy is killed and react accordingly. The Monstrum, the Cabal, Eckhart. An unholy trinity guided by an unspeakable force. And it can steal life from others. This level of production requires a total consistency of purpose. Every aspect of the game has to be in keeping with the overall concept. Every person working on the game knows that they are working on an epic, and everything they do has to reflect that, from concept to completion. <laughs>